Hey guys, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, propagating with uh, flower stalks. Um, this might be kind of more of a low success propagation attempt just because I have not much flower stock to work with. Uh, but both of these flower stalks are coming from uh, cultivars. So what we're going to be trying to do is clone um, these cultivars with the flower stock propagation. So uh, we have a B52 over here. You can tell that's a nice big trap right there. There's my hand just so you guys can kind of see. It's a nice large trap. Got another one coming in right here really nicely. And then over here we got the UK Sawtooth, um, which is UK Sawtooth 2, sorry, uh, which actually has a flower stalk coming in. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it right there. Let me turn it this way, it's easier to see. Right there. You can see the flower stalk coming up there. It's not um, a big flower stalk yet. You can see it's still pretty low. Uh, but I want to trim the flower stalks on these guys because they're still pretty young. Um, they're really healthy, but uh, I just kind of wanted to trim the flower stalks to give them a better chance this first year you know, propagate them and see if we can get some some clones from, from these guys through the, the propagation. This one here is kind of interesting uh, because you can see that it's already been cut. Um, look, when they sent it to me, they cut this one off before it came, uh, but it's actually grown significantly even though it's been cut. You can see it's been cut off right there at the top, but it's actually still, um, looks like it's about an inch long of the healthy green part. So it looks like I have a shot at maybe getting a, a hit on that. So I'm just gonna give it a try. I think I'll have uh, maybe two to three depending on how low I can get that one here uh, tries for this the UK sawtooth and then uh, for my B52 here I might get one uh, attempt here uh, we'll see how long it is when I cut it off but it's probably just gonna be one but that's what I'm gonna be doing today uh, so we'll see I don't know if this previously cut off flower stock will get me a hit um, I don't know uh, it's kind of frustrating because it does take a little bit it takes 30 to 60 days before I see anything really happen um, with with propagating uncloning with the flower stock so I just don't know, uh, so we'll see. But uh, I got my peat moss over here that we're gonna put in. You notice that there's no perlite in there, there's no sand, this is just straight peat moss. It works the best because it's easier to keep the flower stalks in contact with straight peat. Um, I've been trying to get all of the, you know how peat is kind of clumpy sometimes. Uh, so I've just been trying to get all the clumps out because the less clumps there are, the easier it is for these uh, to kind of stay in direct contact with your um, substrate, which is important for uh, successful propagation. You want to make sure that your flower stalks are, are touching and if you have perlite in there uh, it's really hard sometimes to get them with that good contact with the, the rockier substance in there. But uh, So I got my, my, my little plastic pot here. This is I'm going to cut this guy down to size. I'm going to cut it so it's a little bit under this and I'm going to place it inside of here uh, so it's a little bit lower so that I can keep the water level up and around it and I'm going to put some uh, saran wrap on top of it to keep the water in there moisture level high and then really all I got to do is kind of set it and forget it uh, Check it once every couple of weeks to make sure that the water level is high enough and then just kind of hope keep my fingers crossed and See if we get any hits from the, the flower stalk. So I'm gonna throw this on a tripod real quick guys And let's go ahead and uh, check this process out All right guys, let's do this I'm gonna kind of show you my setup here and kind of give you an idea of what I do uh, So what I'm gonna do here first thing is I'm gonna get the plants out of the way here for just a second I'm going to prepare my planter. Okay, so we want to make sure that we cut the planter down um, just a little bit below this line here so that we know how low it is below this guy here. So let's see, so there's my line. So I'm just gonna go down just a little bit further than than that line, and that'll that'll make sure that we can keep uh, this planter really moist and full of water without really needing to check it much, which is kind of the way that I like to do it. I'm kind of impatient with this. Uh, so if I can kind of set it and then not have to worry about it, if I have to keep watering it, obviously I keep checking it and I get frustrated uh, that it's not doing anything and the least less I have to water it, the better. So having this pot be inside of the, the plastic container here will ensure that um, I don't have to water it as much um, and once you put the plastic over it, that water pretty much stays in there. So you just want to, there was actually a couple times that I actually poured, dumped a little bit of the water out and freshened it up just because it was probably not super fresh water anymore because um, it had been like three weeks and it was still pretty high. So um, obviously you can do that if you want, that's totally up to you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill this up here with substrate. Actually, I'm going to take this out because I don't want that the, the plastic container there to get full of substrate. Uh, so again, guys, this is just straight peat moss. Nothing fancy here. Um, do your best that once you get this full and up to the top that we get all the lumps out. I think there was a little bit of perlite in the bottom of this bowl, so I'm a little worried that I might. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get anything in here that's chunky out. Um, I don't want any of these big chunks. You can smash them down or you can just toss them out. Um, just want to get out anything that's going to present a challenge for you to get your flower stalks to be in contact with your substrate. There we go. And then, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, water that down. Got my core gear, Mister. I got a link in the description for this guy. Um, real quick, guys, before I go any further, I just want to thank you for being here. Um, I appreciate it so much. I appreciate you watching my content. Um, trying real hard to open a carnivorous, carnivorous plant nursery someday, and I'm just trying to learn uh, everything there is to know about these plants so that I can help others grow them successfully in my area. Um, so again, thank you for your support. Uh, you watching my videos is supporting me. Um, you subscribing to my channel, uh, liking my videos, all those things are really supportive and helping me uh, gain a little bit of a following. So again, thank you so much, and I appreciate it so much. But um, let's go ahead and uh, keep going with this process here. You can see that the the peat moss doesn't like to absorb the water at first. We're gonna get this guy to absorb the water here to the best of its ability. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna take the lid off of my mister and I'm just gonna dump some water in there. And then basically this guy's gonna be ready to go. Doesn't matter if it's in the pot or, oop, see it's floating. It'll float less. Um, as it absorbs the water because it'll weigh down a little bit It'll absorb all the water through the the holes in the bottom. Uh, make sure that you're using a, a plastic pot that does have drainage. That's super important I don't want that tip. I don't think it's a tip. So there it's gonna as that absorbs the water That's gonna start to sink down Okay guys, sorry about that. I actually had to go dump a little bit of that water out into another one of my plants um, simply because it's just it doesn't absorb fast enough. Um, it takes a little bit for this to absorb so it's not weighing down. And I just had a little too much water in there so I just dumped a little bit out. Um, so when you first start this process, I guess that's a good tip. Make sure you don't put too much water in here. Um, as this absorbs the water, this will actually get heavier and sink to the bottom. You can see even as it is now, like it's it's dry right just under the surface and I've been spraying it for a while. So it takes a long time for this, this peat moss to absorb all that water. So until it absorbs all that water, it'll float around a little bit. Once it gets completely um, saturated with water it'll sink to the bottom so until then just keep a little bit of water in it and then once that sinks down to the bottom then go ahead and uh, fill it up the rest of the way with water but okay so let's go ahead and bring the plants over we need to cut them now look at my DC or my, my dummy DC my sawtooth is about ready to open one of its bigger traps look at that it's cool we caught a little fly yesterday you probably can't see it it's in I think this one here, you can see that it's sealed though. Yeah, you can actually see it right there. See that? Caught a fly. Uh, I've been putting these guys outside almost all day, so in my uh, B52 actually caught a fly too. You can see the seal there. You can't see the fly on this one, but you can see the seal. Anyway, um, getting off track, sorry about that. Uh, so let me grab my, um, my wife got me this really cool kit for Christmas, it's called Fix Body. Um, it's only like six bucks, but it's like a tweezer kit. You can see it's got different tweezer tips. I lost the, the cover on that one, but, and it's also got these little tiny scissors for like precision cuts. Um, so whenever I'm trimming my um, fly traps uh, or I'm cutting flower stalks or something like that, I like to use these because it has a really nice um, curved fine tip scissor. Um, but anyway, uh, link in the description is those. These are really cool and they're kind of nice. Uh, also when I'm putting bugs in my traps or mealworms, um, all that kind of stuff. It's actually really nice for any type of precision work uh, with these. Uh, not to mention <laughs> the tweezers have just come in handy a few times in my personal life because you just never know when you're gonna need a good piece of tweezers. So, uh, so let's go ahead and cut um, the B52 first here. We're gonna get this down as low as we can here. So let's cut right there. Okay, gonna grab that guy. And I'm actually going to also cut just a little bit of this top off because it looks like it's not very healthy at the top here. So I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to do this at an angle. Um, I did hear that if you cut at an angle like this, uh, you're exposing more of that, that surface or you're exposing more of the middle um, and you have a better chance of getting a hit. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing here. Just going to cut the little bit of that right there just so more of that that inside of that flower stalk is exposed. There we go. Okay, so we got the, I do have my uh, my pot marked, but let's go ahead and put this down right here. So we know this 
it over here, we know this is the B-52. The other way we'll know is that this one's going to have at least, the UK Sawtooth is going to have at least two um, stocks in there for, for attempting this. So uh, the UK Sawtooth side will have two where the, the B-52 just has one. Now this is tricky, okay? I want to get down in here, but I do not want to cut or damage any traps. Eyes aren't what they used to be. So there's this guy here. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the tip of the flower on there, um, but then I'll do the same thing on the bottom. This one actually feels really super healthy. So I'm gonna cut this here just to expose more of the inside of that stock. Um, and then I will cut this into two pieces and we're gonna cut this at an angle. Like that, there we go. And we got two there that are about an inch each, maybe just a little bit smaller than an inch, but that's okay because I'm just trying to increase my chances of getting a hit here. Let's see, since so it's starting to fill up with water a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and put... I'm going to do both laying down. I've just had a little bit more success with these laying down than I have with them uh, standing up. So what I'm going to do, bring this a little bit closer for you to see, is I'm going to just kind of just bury the ends of these just a little bit. Um, burying the ends of them will help you make sure that the entire flower stalk has uh, contact with the substrate. There we go. You don't want to bury it though. You want you want the flower stalk to see the light today. You want it to see light. So that's really important. So let's go ahead and put this flower stalk in here. These ones are kind of tricky, the tops, because they, um, they tend to want to kind of move around if you don't get one end down a little bit. Go. Okay. Uh, now both those ends are buried, so that'll kind of help keep that in one place. All right, so now we just need the um, B-52. This one's gonna be a little bit longer, but I think I'm just gonna still ro roll with the one here. Sometimes you can get hits, two hits, on just one flower stalk. So let's go ahead and put this one on the opposite side. That chunk, I don't want that chunk. Um, <laughs> There we go. So both ends are blocked. So the way I, I do have this marked on the inside, but I'll remember this side's off, obviously the side um, with the sawtooth because there's two, and then this side will be the side with the B52 because there's one. So that way I'll kind of know which one is which uh, if I get hits from them. Um, and then the next stop is really, or not the next stop, the next part. And I'm getting low on water in my mister here, but we're just going to douse these guys with water and we're going to continue to. Um, keep an eye on it and make sure that once all this water gets absorbed, because it will, um, that we keep putting water on it. And you also might have to keep kind of covering them up a little bit because as you put the water on here, it's going to kind of move the substrate around a little bit. And that's fine. Um, so you can see here, I'll just move this over a little bit just to keep and make sure that that flower stock has good contact with the substrates. All right guys, so that's where we're at. I didn't do any, I didn't do any of these um, sticking into the soil, although I've had fairly mixed results. That works a lot too. So if that's something that you prefer to do, um, I don't have any problem with that. I think that that probably works just fine. Um, I've just had a little bit more success it seems with it laying down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece of plastic over this guy for now. And then I'm gonna check this in a couple hours to see if that that water's all absorbed and then I'll just add more water until it's it's completely saturated and then that water will just kind of sit in there. Um, I do like using these um, because they they have a little bit of a lip here and you can kind of tuck the saran wrap underneath it, which is kind of nice. We'll start absorbing here right away and in a couple hours, um, that will be good to go. So hopefully we get some hits on these guys. I'll keep giving you updates. I'll probably do like a 30 day update on this because there's not really any point in doing like weekly or because really nothing will happen at least for 30 days. Um, and then, you know, I'll let you know kind of where it's going and if I've got anything. And if I don't, then uh, we'll keep an eye on it. If they all turn black, it means nothing happened and they're dead and we didn't get anything. But if they're still green after 30 days, then we'll, we'll keep keeping an eye on them and keep them watered and keep them wet and, and hope for the best. So, hey guys, so uh, I want to give you a quick update. I've uh, I shot this video like two and a half weeks ago and I was just now getting um, down to processing it and getting ready to upload it. Uh, and I figured... I've, been, I've had these in here for about three weeks, so I figured I might as well give you a quick update in this video instead of having a whole new video for just one update that doesn't have a lot going on. But I just wanted to show you what it looks like after 
two and a half weeks. So let's go ahead and open this up here. I have not added water to this. You can see how the water is condensing at the top there, it's staying inside there. Not added water to this once. I added water once um, after the, the peat moss soaked up all the water. I added a little bit more water in there and this is where we're at. So you can see how wet the substrate is. It's like spongy. You can see the water coming out of the top there. Um, and you can see that there's still water in the sides here. Quite a bit of water, water all the way up to the edge. So I haven't had to water it once. And I'm actually gonna probably change out this water because it's just better to have fresh water. I'm gonna put a little bit of water here on the top for these guys with my mister just because I have it open, so I might as well. I have not really checked these guys much. Um, so you can see, just as a quick update, you can see the this one here. Uh, this is my sawtooth side, because there's two. You can see one of them has turned half black, so the odds of that one striking is a little less, but you can see this one is still very green. Uh, it's in really good shape, and it's nice and thick, so I think there's a pretty good shot there. This one still got a decent shot. I'll probably push this one down just a little bit more to get it in contact with that sub so you can see on the ends there it's starting to curl up just a little bit. And then down here, my B52 actually still looks really healthy. Um, it's still pretty much mostly green, so I think there's a really good chance that this one still hits. So it's only been about two and a half, um, closer to three weeks. So yeah, so that's where we're at and it usually takes about 30 to 60 days to see results with this, whether either they're gonna be dead or they're going to have hits on there. So. Yeah guys, so hopefully we can get some, some good cultivars. Uh, uh, this is an easy way to clone uh, your Venus flytrap. So when you get them from flytrap store, wherever you buy your Venus flytraps, if you get some flower stalks and you don't necessarily want to see that flower, you can cut them off and uh, throw them in a dish like this and, and hope for the best results and maybe have some new baby flytraps. Uh, thanks again guys for being here. Um, like always, I appreciate you all so, so very much. Um, you guys are always constantly motivating me to keep doing this kind of stuff. Uh, some of you seem to find it kind of interesting and I love it because I'm a huge um, carnivorous plant and just kind of any plant nerd. So um, I'm really just doing what I love anyway, just putting it on camera. So thanks a lot guys for being here. I appreciate you and uh, I hope to catch you on the next video.